Hi, it's just an ordinary day in the EEV blog lab here. I've got five oscilloscopes, a spectrum analyzer, and a function generator. What are we going to do with these? Well, have some fun, of course. Let's go. Now, I recently took a look at this uh, Roden Schwartz HMO1202 series scope, and I noted that uh, it had a really good FFT mode and um, actually a, a quite a large uh, number of FFT points as well, 128k points, which is a, a little bit on the unusual, uh, you know, it's on, well, it's on the high end side for these scopes. And uh, somebody asked, well, can I compare it with some other scopes? and see what it's like. So that's what I've done here. Um, I've set it up and what we're uh, comparing, what we're going to have a look at is the Roden Schwartz compared to the uh, Rigold DS1000Z, uh, which everyone's familiar with. I'll put in the uh, 2000Z uh, as well, but I believe there's uh, actually no difference. Oh, sorry, the 2000, DS2000. I believe there's no difference. We've got the uh, Teledyne LaCroix uh, Wavejet touch here. We've got the uh, GW Instec uh, GDS 1104B. We've got the uh, Keysight MSOX uh, 3000 series uh, touch, uh, the new touch model. So let's have a look at the different FFT modes and see which one has the best FFT mode. And we'll just compare it to a spectrum analyzer here. The good old Rigol DSA 815 bottom of the range spectrum analyzer, but it gives us a baseline. So I've got my Siglent uh, TrueArb function gen here, and I've got it set up uh, for an FM signal. So with a carrier frequency of one megahertz here, with an FM uh, frequency of uh, five kilohertz, and a frequency deviation of 500 hertz. And if we have a look at that on our Rigol uh, DSA815, it's a bottom of the range spectrum analyzer, but it does the job. So this is a real RS spectrum analyzer. It actually gets in there and sweeps the frequency across. None of this digital FFT rubbish. And we're getting exactly what we expect here. Here's our carrier frequency, bang on one megahertz. We've got a span of uh, 50 kilohertz there. So that's five kilohertz uh, per division. So you can see our, um, our frequency modulation there and there. And we're getting tiny little ones ones over here as well. Uh, they're just uh, some harmonics of our 5 kilohertz there. And let's have a look at what the same signal we get on the various scopes. Now, how the FFT mode or fast Fourier transform mode on a typical uh, scope works is that it takes your regular input signal here and here's our signal like this. And we can see if we uh, whoop, go in here and eh, not used to all these different scopes that I've got. Anyway, we can see there's our waveform in there. It's a little bit crusty, isn't it? Hmm, bit of distortion. Anyway, doesn't matter. Um, it's real. See, and you can slightly see the little modulation on there. Maybe you can see it a little bit of little bit of shimmy in there. So that's our modulation. So uh, what it's doing is when we turn on FFT mode, it'll actually uh, compute the fast Fourier transform of this, and then we can uh, just go in there and zoom in. But the FFT depends upon uh, many different things. It depends on the sample memory of the scope, how deep a memory you've got. It depends on the sample rate uh, you're using. It depends on your current uh, horizontal time base setting. And uh, most importantly, it uh, depends upon the number of FFT points. And this Roden Schwartz one is unique in not only that it has a high number of FFT points, it has a 128k uh, points, but you can actually select it as well and that's really good and we'll have a look at the effect of that uh, in a minute but that effectively and what that does the number of points is that basically the frequency resolution uh, for each individual pixel in there. It's got to calculate like a frequency bin for want of a better term. It's got to calculate each individual point and there's a lot of processing involved in this and to do actually 128 uh, K points FFT requires a lot of processing grunt. So typically it might be done in an FPGA or an ASIC. When you do it on like a regular Joe Bloggs arm processor or something it's going to probably you know grind to a halt. But uh, yeah we can actually select that. So you can see that when we drop down in that it just gets coarser and coarser and of course it gets faster because it's able to calculate the fast Fourier transform faster. Now it does the FFT using a DFT or a discrete uh, Fourier transform and depends uh, and depending upon the uh, manufacturer you get they might implement that uh, DFT in different ways. 
So ultimately what the oscilloscope is doing with the FFT function is it's converting your time domain waveform here and doing a discrete Fourier transform on it and actually converting it into the frequency domain. So now on the x-axis we've got frequency and amplitude on the y just like we had before except we're a dB scale of course um, and we can actually show you that. There we go, if we just put voltage like that, eh, no good. You've got to have it on dB because we're talking about quite large relative magnitudes there. So of course the FFT converts your oscilloscope into a rudimentary spectrum analyzer, but depending on how well they've implemented that FFT, how many FFT uh, points has it got like this one, and how well it actually does everything, uh, determines how useful it is. And as you can see, this Roden Schwartz one, Excellent, it's got 128k points FFT and it allows us to get excellent resolution. You can see our carrier in there, you can see our frequency modulation. And also if your scope has got the uh, high resolution mode as well, you can whack that on and you'll notice that the noise floor will drop a bit. It'll be a bit better. Has to recalculate that. Thinking, 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 but there you go. It's a little, it's a little bit better. A little bit better. And also what the number of points uh, does here is it actually effectively lowers your noise floor. So it, there could be like details hidden down in there that we can't actually uh, see, for example. So if I lower the number of points, we'll see that this sideband component here might eventually vanish because the noise floor is effectively going to lift. And I should be able to show that if I scroll like right down to a small center frequency just so that it's always uh, going to be on the screen. We're at uh, the minimum 2048 uh, points now and just watch where this uh, noise level is and you'll see it slowly drop. Just each time I increment the number of points there, you'll notice that it's slowly, slowly drop and you'll see all the way up. There we go. So that is like a significant difference and of course if you do averaging and all sorts of other uh, you know stuff you can really bring signals out of the uh, noise and here's a uh, shot from an Infineon uh, application note where it's showing the difference between like a, a small number of FFT points and uh, like millions of FFT points and you can see really how all the signals come right out of the noise. So if we have our maximum number of points here, 130, 128k, and then we go into our choir menu, we're just in regular uh, refresh mode at the moment, but if we actually go into average mode, for example, we can actually watch the noise floor drop. Here we go. There we go. It drops a little bit and it brings out a bit more signal to noise there. So there you go. It makes a difference. There we go. You can see it at two averages and tweak it up. Well, right, let's go for broke. And then we can really go to town. We've got our average in on 512 averages. Thank you very much. But then we can also turn on our high resolution mode and wait for it. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. This is excellent it's doing a really good job and the other thing i like about it is when you turn fft mode on right we're in our uh time base here when you turn fft mode on you don't have to go dicking around with the menus or the select button what it does is it now enables your time per division to work like this on your fft like this absolutely fantastic so you can do that and then the position the horizontal position control now works that and it just makes it incredibly incredibly simple to use and intuitive to use it's fantastic of course but if you want to go back to and adjust the uh, time base you've got to actually switch the FFT off and then and now we go back in and we work on our time base again like that but uh, yeah it's just so intuitive let me show you one that's not intuitive and here we have the GW Instec GDS 1104B now this thing actually it claims to be the duck's guts in terms of FFT. It claims one, claims it can do a one meg point FFT. And well, I, it's doing a lot because look, check it out. I think it, it probably is doing it. So it must have some real grunty hardware in there to do a one meg point FFT. It's absolutely incredible. But as you can see, we've got our carrier, we've got our um, FM modulation, and of course that component down there as well. So it's just as good, if not better, than the Roden Schwartz one, but oh, just try and use this thing, right? The horizontal time base still works 
on the um, time domain up here, okay? So it's like that, right? So my horizontal time base is still there. Where's the, let's go back to here, okay? But, now, well, this is fairly typical of scopes, but look how we have to dick around, okay? I've got to use the uh, the variable knob here, okay? I've got to select which one I want, right? Either my uh, horizontal per division or uh, my center point, okay? So now I can actually vary my center point, but <laughs> that varies depending upon the setting of the horizontal per division. So if you want to go all the way in, well, uh, all the way out, sorry, and then scroll across. You've got to dick around with that, and then you can maybe move this across, and it's just a lot, a lot of dicking around. And trust me, when you're trying to set the damn thing up for the first time, and it's jerky, of course, because it's got to do all the FFT uh, processing in the background, and it's just, it, it is really horrible to use. Absolutely awful, but it ultimately can do the business. And by the way, both uh, scopes have been set to uh, the Hanning window here. You've got various different types, rectangular, Hanning, Hanning, don't get confused between the two, and good old Blackman, or Blackman Harris. And uh, uh, so we've got that set to the uh, same. I've got it set to Hanning as I did on the Roan Schwartz one, because that actually will make a difference. You'll see it. There we go. Rectangular. Let's, I won't go into details of how all these various uh, modes work and things like that. But, um, it's, but it's just when you're comparing them, it's just important to use the same windowing technique. And I've also got both scopes set to uh, one meg point uh, sample memory, and they're both working at uh, 50 meg samples uh, per second here. One meg points, as you can see, same time base setting, so it just allows us to get, you know do decent comparisons. And the third cab off the rank here is the Keysight MSOX 3000. And this one I really like. It works really well. It's got a dedicated FFT uh, button, goes straight in. And you can actually do FFT and another math function at the same time. And by the way, it's the only one that allowed me to actually turn off visually the actual channel. Because, like, it's hard to see it when, you, you know, when you've got your uh, time signal on there. So, you know, it just that's just a nice touch. Anyway, uh, once again, I can't set the uh, memory depth with the uh, key sight because it, uh, it's purely automatic. But, you know, it's doing, uh, it, it's doing its deep memory business. And uh, as you can see, it's doing it perfectly well. The key sight has a rated uh, 64K FFT points. So not quite as good as the Ronin Schwartz, not nearly as good as the GW Instec, but as you can see, does a pretty damn good job of it. But unlike the Roden Schwartz, this one is also uh, requires you to dick around with the menus uh, down here to actually uh, set your uh, your center and your span. But the good news is is that you can actually, because this is the new touchscreen scope, you can actually uh, type in exactly what you want. So you know, but it's not nearly as fiddly as the uh, GW Instec. So it works, you know, it works fairly well. And the Keysight also has much better velocity control here, and it doesn't slow down based on the FFT or anything like that. So we can keep our span at a uh, low value, and then we can actually go, look, we can go way, we just jumped right up to 24.5 gig, right? It has a hell of a, uh, hell of a velocity control, but it, it really is implemented beautifully. So the, uh, what we had to dick around, it was so painful, you want to rip your hair out on the GW in stack we can easily come to one megahertz it's almost as quick to use the knob as it is to uh, uh, type it in really I'm not I'm trying to talk at the same time I'm not really concentrating but yeah you know you can really zoom you know narrow in straight on that it is very nice so yep yeah, thumbs up to that now, the Teledyne LaCroix WaveJet Touch 354. Well, uh, just like the uh, Keysight, this one also allows us to turn off the uh, time domain waveform as well. Excellent. But uh, this thing has a rated um, 8K points uh, FFT. So, but look, I mean, this is... It is horrendously bad. It is awful. This is the absolute best I can get it. Dicking around, trying to get all the settings uh, right and everything else. This is the best I can get. Like, I can't even, I don't even know what's going on with the noise floor down here. I cannot do anything. Look, it, it looks like dicking balls. That's what it looks like. 
And there's only a small selection of FFT windows here. Very confusingly, um, Von Han, that's actually another name for uh, Hanin. So it does have it, but yeah, like, I, I, don't, I don't think I've ever seen it called Von Han on any other scope. Anyway, um, yeah, that's all you get. But, oh, geez, like, it's just hopeless. But it kind of, sort of there, but meh. Yeah. But um, it does have a dedicated uh, math control here and allows us to change the uh, offset there. And the other good thing is, is that the horizontal control does actually become the uh, span for the thing. So just like it did on the Roden Schwartz. So thumbs up there. But apart from that, it is useless. I mean, this is... I mean, dicking around, this, uh, I've got one meg point uh, memory on this thing, and, like, this is the best I can get. It's just, it's so rudimentary, it almost doesn't work. But anyway, I'll show you one that's even worse. And sorry to all you Rigol DS1054Z fanboys out there. Um, yeah, these low-end scopes just do not cut it. This is the absolute best you can get with one of these low-end Rigols. It's so, how low is it? Well, it doesn't even tell you how many points it can do in FFT mode. It's, it's not many, clearly. So this is the most optimum uh, setting I can get, 20 microseconds uh, per division. And, uh, you know, it's like, that is, by tweaking this thing, getting the optimum settings for everything, that's the best it can do. It's just, it's no good at all. I mean, yeah, you can see a carrier, but, Meh, nothing else. Now I'll just show you how here how the horizontal uh, time base, which is up here, 20 microseconds per division, affects our ability to uh, set a center frequency and our span as well. So right, I've got let's say center frequency right. That's as high as it high as it goes. Okay, absolute ma maximum. Our span is as high as it goes. There we go. Go down to 25 kilohertz up to 250 kilohertz that's at 20 microseconds per division and yes you can see like it's now got the full range okay over there so our um our span is uh 250 uh, kilohertz per division so uh 500 uh one meg so there's our one meg carrier which we want to measure so we can actually go in there and see it okay but now i'll change my horizontal time base to 50 microseconds and you can see that it's dropped down. Once again, this is the absolute maximum we can do here. We can only do 100 kilohertz per division. Can't do anything more. You'll notice that we're set to 1.2 uh, meg points here. Um, it just cannot, it's got a very low number of FFT points. So it can't use all of that sample data. And that's one of the keys with having a high number of FFT points. No point having 150 million gigabytes of sample memory if your FFT algorithm, it just can't use it. So um, yeah, so our signal is way outside the range here. So we can't, obviously can't select that time-based setting, okay? And if we go worse, we can only go to 800 kilohertz, okay? So we've got it. So the absolute best range that we can get where we're gonna get the most resolution out of this thing is at 20 microseconds per division because anything uh, faster, let me go to 10, okay? Or, you know, let, let's, let's go down to one, for example. You know, look, <laughs> right, we're at five megahertz per division. Okay, we're going to get no resolution in there at all. So the absolute best, when you're mucking around trying to get the best FFT possible on your scope, you've got to do this, find where your, uh, I'm tweak. sorry, the horizontal, I'm not showing on the uh, screen here. But um, yeah, so that is the absolute best we can do. So we want to go center. We want to go one megahertz, and boop, 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 right, and then we want to change our span like that, and bingo, that is the absolute best we can do on this thing, the absolute best. So as you can see, it's best ain't good enough. So while these uh, modern low-end digital scopes are absolutely Thoroughly impressive value for money. It's got more bells and whistles than you can poke a stick at. It's got a ton of memory. This thing has like 14 mega standard. I think it has uh, when you, uh, if you buy the option at, oh, I've got a dicky. I think I've got a dicky T piece there. I think I do. Anyway, you get these things, impressive amount of memory. It works great in the time domain, everything else, but the FFT on it is 
almost like a toy. And we'll see if the Rigol DS2200 uh, is any different. Uh, we're at 50 microseconds per division, which wouldn't work before. And sure enough, it doesn't work here either. Look, we'll change it down to 20 microseconds per division. Bingo. We've now got our FFT, and we can maybe zoom in on that and have a squiz. But the good thing about the Rigols is that, uh, yes, once you're in math mode, the horizontal actually does that. And if you just press channel one, bingo, you can go back and that changes your time domain. And you press math again and bingo, you're in. Uh, you can actually adjust that and then your time base can be used to zoom in. So jazzy jazzy, okay, but meh, wah, 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 wah. thanks for playing. That is no good at all. Woo! Jumping around like a jackrabbit. There we go. Center 1 meg. We're at uh, 10 dB uh, per division. Maybe we can uh, change that. Can't we? Hang on. No. How do we uh, How do we adjust? Oh, that's right. We've got to go in here and we've got to go like that. And then select. Now we're at 20 dB per division like we were on the other ones. Oh, goodness. Dicking around, dicking around. There we go. Yep. No good at all. Not actually sure why it's jumping around like a jackrabbit on that 20 microseconds, uh, like we're triggering smack in the middle there. Nothing wrong there. And then if we go to 10 microseconds per division on our time domain, then it doesn't jump around anymore. And we got similar to what we saw on the Rigol 1000Z. But yeah, see, it's, it's pretty much just a toy. You can see that something's there and that might be good enough for a lot of uses. But to analyze something like this FM uh, modulated signal, you know, like use it more like a real spectrum analyzer, it's no good at all. Now, if we go back to our uh, Roden Schwartz here, it's a good example because it allows us to change the number of FFT points, which is absolutely beautiful. And you'll notice that if we change, okay, we're at maximum 128K points, change it to 64K points, and you'll notice that it's halved. Like that, look, it, it, it has stopped here, okay? And the center is at 833 kilohertz. That's why there's no signal anymore because our one megahertz is out here like this, okay? So using this particular time base of five milliseconds here, sorry for the big fat finger in the way, I uh, should use my poker, uh, five milliseconds uh, per division and at 65K points, we can't get that. So we're gonna have to go Basically, turn this, this is where it becomes a bit annoying. Let's go down back to two milliseconds per division here and turn the FFT back on, and you'll notice that we will hopefully get it. There we go. Now, with our 65k points, we can actually go in there and see that. But it all depends on the, upon the time base. So, yep, we're at the center now, and bingo, we can go in like that and see it. But of course, if we change our if we don't have enough data there, let's go down to, say, an order of magnitude lower, 200 microseconds per division. Turn our FFT back on, and look, we can't get... See, the resolution in there is no good, okay? Because we're calculating, even though we're still calculating a massive 65... Thousand um, FFT points in there, i.e. frequency bins, it still isn't enough. We cannot zoom in any further on that, and you'll notice that it has now given us a much greater frequency range. Our, cent our span is now 100, look at this. Yeah, it's like 25 megahertz uh, span there. It's absolutely enormous. Good thing about this is that if you want to see a bit more, I can just turn that uh, menu off there. That's uh, quite jazzy. But you can see how it's all a big trade-off in terms of, you know, getting the right... Uh, a, you've got to have the right memory depth set. That's not going to work. You've got to have the right uh, time base setting. You've got to have, uh, well, you know, generally if your scope can do, um, you know, allows you to change the number of points like this, then you set it to, you know, maximum unless you want really fast updating. So if I now set it to uh, 8K points FFT, same as what we had on that crappy Teledyne LaCroix, look, you can see that it's given us, you know, like that, is a similar sort of result at that particular time base. Let's see if we can tweak that. So if we turn off FFT, let's give us a bit more. Let's go up to one millisecond. Can we get one millisecond's worth? Nope, because it only gives us our, um, sorry, our span, 500 kilohertz. Not good enough. So the best time base we can do is 
500 microseconds, there we go, 500 microseconds per division, and now we can zoom in. But, you know, at least it is doing a better job than that Teledyne and LaCroix. You can actually see the separate signal components there, you know, it, it's fairly clean. And of course, as I said, you know, if we go into the acquire menu, high, high resolution mode, maybe we can clean that up a little bit there. But we can certainly go in there and see these things. And with this Roden Schwartz, the measurements on the Roden Schwartz are really quite nice. I've showed the quick view thing, but if you go into Kurt Witcher and auto uh, measure, which doesn't work in FFT mode, uh, sadly, but uh, if you go, like if you turn the cursors on, next peak, previous peak, works an absolute treat. Look at that. So I hope you can start to appreciate the huge trade-offs in terms of sample rate, time-based setting, number of FFT points, the higher the better. You know, it's worth paying for if uh, FFT functionality is something that you want in a scope because, you know, you could end up with a toy like those Rigol scopes and, you know, it's really no good. So there you have it. There's a little look at the uh, FFT modes on uh, five different scopes here. No, I didn't. De I deliberately didn't use the Tektronix uh, MDO uh, 3000 scope because it's got a built-in hardware spectrum analyzer. So you know, I well, I guess I could get the FFT mode out and try that just for kicks, shall we? Yeah, yeah. Why not? Anyway, I'll do that after this. But um, and as you can see, I love this Roden Schwartz. Works really, really well. It's got a large number of FFT points and its function, its usability functionality. The auto setup on the um, uh, FFT gets you in the ballpark, and it just really is quite a nice scope. Of course, the uh, the key site, uh, which has, which is advertised as having um, a specific, well, this new touch model, specific uh, FFT uh, functionality, it can do gated FFT. It's extremely powerful, which the Roden Schwartz can't do any of that. So it's in terms of FFT, the best is the key site um, MSOX uh, 3000 in this bunch. Uh, by far, but you know the Roden Swartz does a really good job. The Rigol, uh, the Rigols are a toy, you know, as are most low-end um, scopes. The GW Instec, very nice, very impressive at one meg point uh, FFT, but the usability on it is just pretty atrocious. But ultimately, it does the job. So you know. Hey, you've got to give it a thumbs up for that. Um, and the Teledyne LaCroix here is a, is a joke, the dick and balls model. Yeah, don't like that at all. Hmm. Um, that's not good. Power on self-test failed. What? What? Therapist is the power, please, qualified. Unbelievable. Um, oh, well, I've got my signals connected in, but surely that shouldn't make a difference. That is greatly disturbing. Now, if we have a look at this on the uh, Tektronix MDO 3000 scope here, this is not the FFT. This is using the uh, analog uh, RF uh, front end because it's a mixed domain oscilloscope. It does actually have an RF spectrum analyzer built in, um, albeit it's a digital sampling based uh, system. So it does actually do an FFT approach, but it actually has you know specific hardware and software to actually uh, do this. So it's not a. That's why it's it's faster update. Even though this slow uh, scope is generally slow as a wet week, um, it is much faster updating because it's doing the uh, uh, discrete Fourier uh, transform of the or the FFT of the signal instead of actually doing the sweep-based system. You know, generating a sweep and going across because the uh, Rigol DSA eight one five to build up the image that we saw before actually takes like fifty seconds, I think, to do an entire sweep because I had a low resolution bandwidth set in and everything else but there you go this gives an excellent result check it out it's uh performance is better as we've seen before performance is better than the entry level rigol dsa uh, 815 and as you actually saw before we've got a uh, modulation index set up here of uh, 0.1 so the modulation index is the frequency uh, devi is the frequency deviation uh, divided by the FM frequency there? So it's uh, we've got 500 hertz deviation with a uh, five kilohertz FM uh, frequency. So I'll just interestingly show you what happens if we take that above one. Okay, if we take the modulation index above one, we'll see our carrier actually start to drop, and as we go up, say to 0.5 or something, we'll actually see 
more, uh, so, uh, we'll see more tones down here getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So it's uh, 500 hertz at the moment, okay? This is one kilohertz, and do we see any? No, not really. Let's take it up to two kilohertz. There we go. Got another, see? There we go. They increase in amplitude, and then we start to see more of them. If we increase the modulation index, let's go up to five. So we've got a modulation index of one. So our frequency deviation is five kilohertz. Our FM frequency is five kilohertz. And hey, look at that. There we go. Beautiful. Now, if we take it above that, so we've got a module, I've got now taken up to 10 kilohertz frequency deviation. So we've got a modulation index of two. Bingo. Our carrier here has dropped. And let's take it up to 20. So now you can see the carrier has actually gone back up and the uh, side first sideband here has dipped back down and then it goes up again. And this is all classic textbook uh, stuff for FM uh, frequency analysis theory. So uh, go look it up if you want, but it works. Excellent. But if we actually try and do an FFT on our uh, channel one signal here, look, it's got the same annoying thing as the GW Instec. You've got to set, you know, your horizontal controls actually still work on your uh, time domain signal. So you've got to now dick around with these two multi-purpose controls. I hate having these two separate controls on the MDO 3000. It's just, oh, it's excruciating. Anyway, well, actually in this case, it's a bit handier because um, this is a good use of the dual knobs, I guess. You don't have to uh, dick around with this. So uh, we can actually uh, Tweak that. You can see how slow this thing is. It's just, oh, oy, whoa, you can easily overshoot with this. So, uh, anyway, um, this thing does have a keypad. So, actually, we can type it in. Oh, beautiful. Yes, I love things with keypads. Oh, so wonderful. So wonderful. And we want, what, 100 kilohertz? There we go. We're in like Flynn. Okay, now I've set this to uh, one meg point memory. I've set it to Hanin window. Here we go, and one megahertz uh, uh, center with a well, hundred. I sure I it's set. It's changed that to one hundred twenty-five. I'm sure I set it to a hundred. Anyway, um, it looks like it needs to. It can't. Hundred kilohertz. There we go. No, it doesn't like that. Anyway, so we need to. Uh, Oh, uh, sorry, uh, per division, duh. Okay, so let's uh, go in there and 10 kilohertz. Ah, oh, it's changed our carrier. One megahertz, thank you very much. It didn't, didn't like that, did it? 10 kilohertz per division. Oh no, there we go, 12.5. Okay, now we're in like Flynn. Here we go. It's doing the business now. But look, it's not updating. It's not updating. <laughs> like, you'd expect to see the noise change. That way, we got one. We got one. Um, yeah, this is the MDO 3000 in a nutshell. It is one of the slowest modern scopes I've ever used. I, I, what, I think it is the slowest. It is just horrendous. Um, every time you turn something on, it's got very limited processing power in this thing. So I don't know how many points FFT uh, this one actually does in math mode. I wonder if it's in the manual. Let me go read it. But let me try and turn the channel off. Can we still do the FFT? I don't know. But anyway, look how sharp this is. It's absolutely incredible. It must have a massive number of frequency bins, i.e. a massive number of FFT points that it's calculating. This has got it. Yes, it still works, by the way, with the waveform off. Excellent. So the Tektronics actually is, has got to be the winner in, the, in, in this FFT shootout by far. That's got to be equivalent to the million points in the uh, GW Instec, no doubt. So no wonder it's as slow as a wet week. Um, is that, no, it doesn't tell us. We've got one meg point as our uh, sample memory, but it doesn't tell us how many uh, FFT points it's actually doing. And there's, yeah, there's no indication in there. All you can tell is by how slow it is. And yes, I just read the manual and sure enough, this thing has up to two meg points. 
FFT. So absolutely brilliant. Um, yeah, okay. Sorry, Tektronix. No wonder it's uh, slow calculating 2 million meg points. But the GW Instec was faster doing a million. It was at l more than twice as fast. So it is, this is still a very slow scope, right? <laughs> Don't get me wrong. It's a dog. But uh, hang on. Why is it now, like... It's now take. Oh, there we go. Hey, we got one. Um, yeah, it, it takes forever. It's still very slow, but it can give you the performance. Not that you really need it because you're going to use the real RS spectrum analyzer. But anyway, this is indicative. It should be indicative. Uh, don't quote me, but uh, should be indicative of the other uh, non MDO scopes um, in uh, in text range because basically the MDO is one of their existing series with the RS spectrum analyzer hardware tacked on. That's basically what it is. Um, so yeah, its performance should be similar. So absolutely. The MDO is the winner, although I'm not sure if it can do gated, but I think we can, can we do gated on the real RF like we can on the key site? I don't know. Anyway, um, it, it is a winner. So very, very happy with that. Oh, I can do advanced math. And there we go. That's zoomed in a bit. That's uh, 2.5 kilohertz per division now. So check that out. Beautiful result. Absolutely gorgeous. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, well, it was supposed to be a quick look. I always say that, don't I? And then I just waffle on and yeah, yeah, find extra things to do. Anyway, look at the difference between FFT modes on various scopes. And you can see how some of the entry level ones are just toys pretty much. Yeah, you can detect that some carriers there, but that's about it. You can't see some basic uh, FM uh, sidebands and things like that. So, um, yeah, but I like that little Roden Schwartz. It's very cute. Look at it. Um, but yeah, the winner, um, Tektronix, but the Keysight one is really awesome as well. GW Instec, a lot of points in it, million points, but yeah, it's a bit annoying to use. But ultimately, yes, it does do the business. So there you go. Um, it was not designed to be a tutorial on FFT tutorial or anything. It was just a comparison of uh, all the different scopes. But I hope you liked it. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up and all that sort of jazz. Catch you next time.